Welcome to Empire Building, the podcast where we talk about building big businesses and even bigger lives. I'm your co-host, Seychelle Van Poole. I'm Via Williams. And I'm Wendy Papazan. We talk a lot about time management here on the Empire Building Podcast, and it's probably because time is literally the most important and precious resource that we have. Um, yesterday, uh, Via and uh, Sarah and I were actually on, um, we were speaking for a for someone, and I introduced this idea of, of my new goal of being a time billionaire. It was and, so good. Um, I just love this idea. So it's sort of like being a billionaire, where if, if you're a billionaire, you have all the money that you want, and a time billionaire is actually you have all the time to do all the things that you want. So today we're going to talk about time management and a nice little framework to uh, to basically help you with your time. We call it the four D's of time management. This is not something that we created. It's actually something that was first introduced in a book called The Power of Focus um, by Jack Canfield, Mark Victor Hansen, and Les Hewitt. And it was just one of those things that became, I don't know, instantly popular. And I think a lot of you have probably already heard this framework before, but the point of it is to really help us separate the fake urgent tasks from the highly important ones so that we can gain control of our time. I love that. And you know, this reminds me of a really fun movie of Dodgeball where the rules are <laughs> duck, dive, dip, and dodge. Um, Those are Seychelles' 40s. I, <laughs> it was my 40s. We got a duck, dip, dive, and dodge, all time management. No. <laughs> I mean, come on. It was a great game back in the day. It's kind of good for time management. Duck, dive, really dip, is. and dodge. Yeah. But we digress. Yes. That's okay. So, yeah, Wendy, we'll what are the 4Ds? Well, so the 4Ds are do it, delete it, defer or sometimes people say delay it and then delegate it so via do you want to kick us off yeah um i'm going to kick us off with the nike number one just do it so just so do, do it. it right yeah we need to <laughs> so, wait on here for that I know. like anything in life we need to have like a theme song every time we have a framework that's going to come up we have like a framework music bed framework that comes out, right? framework, framework. Oh, that was like that's really good. good. That oh, was Seychelle. that was surprisingly really like that was who knows. I always feel like it's Seychelle. Wayne's World a little bit, but then you Wayne's make, World, yeah, you'd be, excellent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Actually, that would be that would be fun. Probably yes. a copyright thing there. All right, so do it. So this means you know action, and and there does you know there are frameworks for this. Like how do you decide which D to do right? So a couple years ago, it was actually a long time ago, seven or eight years ago, I read this book called Getting Things Done by David Allen, mm-hmm. Caveat. I re- so I recommend the book. It's called Getting Things Done. Caveat, that in the it show was notes. extraordinarily hard to get through. It is not, not the kind of book that was easy to turn the pages on. Like It's the kind of book I just kind of make myself read, you know? So um, it wasn't easy for me to read that book, but it was a good book and it taught me a lot of things because I am just not naturally disciplined in this area. Got a question and for so, you. Mm-hmm. Did you use some of the ideas from the book Getting Things Done to finish the book? Ooh. If the book was difficult? No. Yes, I did now that I'm okay. thinking about it. Okay. Yeah, one of them, which I'm happy to share. I think it actually goes well with this one. So um, right. that was a good question. So uh, I know you're trying to be kind of funny, but I think it was, I was a good but question. I mean, it was kind of serious at the yeah. same time, you know? I know. Yeah. I know. I agree. It's like yeah. you wonder if they did well, it on well, purpose. One of his rules is, um, is the two-minute rule. And when something comes across your desk or across your screen, and you can do it in two minutes or less, David Allen says, just go ahead and do it right then and now. Mm -hmm. So one example, he always says, when you bring your mail in, right then and there, sort it over the garbage can. Don't wait, don't delay it, don't throw it in a pot. Like, you know, get into Mm -hmm. the habit of doing it because that's less than two minutes. And, you know, same thing if you want to zero base your email. Now, if you are friends with me on Instagram, you will see, I just posted on my story, I have about 248,000 emails that on the little red icon circle, you know, on my phone. So what? clearly I don't do that. Yeah, I know. It freaks people out. Clearly doesn't Whoa. freak me out. 
but it, no. it freaks me. I am, people. I'm an, were, excellent, I'm an excellent toggler, though, of my email. Like, I can go in and find something from, like, 2013 that you sent me. It, because I ha, like I have the brain where it's organized in my head, but if you looked at my email, I'm with you. you yeah, you I search afraid. everything. You'd like, be very I don't, afraid. Yeah. You'd be afraid. Yeah, you'd be, you wow. should yeah. be afraid. So, well, how many but, you know, it's funny. You have, Seychelle? I just, just like 20, almost 25,000. I will clear mine out and start there over again. There are some people that are breathing deep. They're, right they're now, deep breathing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I got hey. visceral reactions on my Instagram story. <laughs> really? But, I, but here's the thing. For a lot of people, though, who say Shelt's hard for us to relate to, but for a lot of people <laughs> who zero base their, their email, yeah. that's kind of their, their, their philosophy. Like, if I'm going to block time to check my email, it's going to take less than two minutes. I'm just going to do it now. You and I just have a different brainwave. So I'm going to take 14 months and I will start deleting all of my 25,000 emails and I'll see you in 2024. You just throw them all over to some random folder is what you do and just start over I know. in your head. I, I'll tell you though, I can find anything in there. So I'm I mean, I, they'll be like, you know what? I purged you my email. You don't stuff have this. Still or, or yeah. you just not and then, But what happens yeah, is I that's, keep that's increasing my memory. <laughs> like I keep oh. your, the storage. We're just so on the Google Drive like plan that just is gigabyte infinite at this point. Gigabyte. It's just infinite. Yeah. But I, to say I, mean, I'm not I zero can search base, things up but I keep from it like under 2013. And it's like a, my to-do list is what my email exactly. is. Like I'll have about 80, 80. I mean, like during the day, it'll pop up like over 200 mm-hmm. and some. But like, yeah. But by Monday morning, I'd love to have like 75 or emails, emails or less. And it's kind of a to-do list for me. Yeah. Well, that's why you are winning in the email battle that we are clearly <laughs> losing. It's not, a, it's not a it's not a battle to you know. win. It is not a battle to win. In fact, actually, it was really interesting. I read an article in the New York Times uh, this week, and it talks about how this parent was getting annoyed that their kid never checks their email, and uh, and they're like, you know what? This is that's actually a good thing. You know, so many of us waste so much time in email. It's yeah. disgusting. Mm. You know, well, that's I mean, honestly, I star the priority right. ones. Yeah, I start the priority ones and like a lot of email that I get are FYIs or CC'd on stuff and it's like, I don't, you know, sometimes I need to keep it for record keeping, but I'm not going to go and create 19 bajillion folders. Like it just, okay, you know, I did when that I'm in once. meetings all day, I tried it. It did not go well. Yeah. Okay. I totally tried that <laughs> once. Right. And I, got, I like spent hours and I'm like, okay, I'm getting it together in my email. And then like a couple months later, people were like getting really angry at me. Like via, like you missed, we, at, we invited you. It was in They're like, we, we invited you to come speak and we didn't hear from you, whatever. And then I realized, oh yeah, I forgot everything went to a folder. I had never, I set them up and then never checked them again. <laughs> yeah, I, I just wasn't I used that. to it. Bad will, fail. I will I say I zero, deleting all my 30 folders. I do zero That's base great. like my text messages though or oh, like yes. 100% social media my texts inbox. Are like those zeroed out. I'm zeroed out on. So if you want to get me, it's better to text or social media me me instead of email me if you need something. So. Oh, I'm obsessed with those being zeros. Text, DMs. Oh my yeah. gosh, I'm the same those way. Isn't that funny? Interesting. Well, now that I know how to get you. I'm not going to email you. Well, you never do. I mean, you well, it's me probably anyway. why. But here's here's what's interesting about it. So I let's talk about the do it. So for Seychelle and I, clearing out our email is not a two minute task. No. So we probably need to, we, and we'll move on to delay it or delete it, right? But mm-hmm. but you know whatever it is. Um, I was telling the ladies this morning. I read the most interesting article because when do you ask me earlier? What kind of what did I use to finish the book, right? The big Mm -hmm. thing I got out of getting things done, the two minute rule is great, but that's not the big like aha I got. The big aha I got was unfinished loops create stress. Mm. And and that it gave me the if if that book taught me anything, it was it gave me the awareness that unfinished loops are like broken records in your head and in your mind. And that's what caused me stress. So I was telling the ladies, there's a phenomena that defines this and it's called the Zygernik effect. If you're Russian and you're probably criticizing my pronunciation, I believe that's the Zygernik or the Zygernik effect, right? So check this out, it's so interesting. So it was, uh, there was a Russian psychologist named Ruma Zygernik and uh, she was sitting at a really busy restaurant and she was observing and she noticed that the waiters had better memories of the unpaid orders. So they were unfinished tasks, right? Then, the ones that the bill had been settled and paid. Mm. And so she said they couldn't remember exact details of the order when she asked them, but if it ha- if the bill hadn't been paid, they could recite exactly what was on their ticket. Hmm. 
Hmm. So she started realizing that failing to complete a task creates enough of a cognitive tension that it keeps your brain circling back to it like a broken record. And that cognitive tension causes stress. Now that can be good and bad, I suppose. But but you, if you are feeling stress on a topic, you need to finish that loop. Mm. That's why. And when you made the point when we were talking about it, Wendy's like, "Well, yeah, that's why you wake up at three in the morning." And it's true. You you wake up because of unfinished loops in your head. Oh 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 yeah yeah. Yeah. I gotta Mm -hmm. remember that and that and that. And Mm -hmm. that's when you got to do the first D. That's when you need to do it because Mm -hmm. otherwise that stress. And maybe doing it is is another D. But but you're at least like okay. If I'm gonna delay it, I'm gonna write down exactly what and when. And and that's Mm -hmm. probably enough to put it to Mm -hmm. bed. So Mm -hmm. well, I mean, and we're gonna talk about this in a little bit. But one of the things that I do is is when we talk about delegation, is I have when I'm doing my four one one, I have a whole nother tab that I call my 80% and I have yeah. all the different people in my world and I if I have something that I know needs to get done that week but I don't want to do it I put it on that person's list and then when I'm meeting with them Ooh. on their 411 I just go over it with them so that's that's the last Ooh. D but um, if you've got some of those unfinished loops and there's people in your world who can mm-hmm. do things it's just a way to like not only put it on okay. a list but also like as- assign it to someone Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And I, I actually will have, when I have my email open, there are things that are for other people that I know aren't urgent. But then on Monday, I'll just have that conversation with them. I like that organizational structure, Wendy. Um, Via, this reminds me too of your um, New Year's resolution of not starting something you can't finish. Yeah, my word of the year is finish yeah. this year. Yeah, finish. And that, mm. that whole part of doing it and unfinished loops totally like logically leads me there for you that's really cool yeah it, that's yeah super cool. for me it's a problem i mean i'm just not naturally you know i um this it, planning daily rituals daily routines daily habits do not come naturally to me mm. much more of a free spirited creative thinker so i have to mm-hmm. box have myself to in a little on. bit yeah well i i think but it's awesome and i think awareness it around all. it yeah no you can't no. so i love that you've created a framework around it mm-hmm. Um, the second Wayne's one world. for excellent framework. Okay, okay. Um, the second one is delete it. Um, and as you know, also known for those of you who are already using this technique, right? But deleting is the easiest of the four D's to implement because um, you don't have much to do other than just get rid of it, delete it. Um, and it's like Shakespeare says, right? To do or not to do. That is the question. And so, um, you know, for me, email triage is not going to be my best example because I don't do that, but Wendy does. So, um, you know, that's a great example of how you could go in and triage with your email, right, and do massive deletes. Um, or making sure you're staying at like 100 or less where you have like a goal that you're setting under. Yeah, Wendy, what? That feels impossible. Well, it's not because I do it, so... Yeah. Um, but he, but here's something that that I was thinking about when I was when I was uh, looking this over this morning is I was out to dinner last night and someone at the dinner table was telling me that they have one whole they've moved two times and they have one whole wall in their garage full of unpacked boxes that they moved twice. Mm-hmm. And uh, this guy was just telling me how he's trying to convince his wife just to throw them away because mm-hmm. obviously mm-hmm. they've moved two mm-hmm. times. They don't need that stuff anymore. And yeah. sometimes I think we get into this, um, it's like with clutter, you know, it's like whether it's information mm-hmm. clutter or life clutter, mm-hmm. uh, we think sometimes we need to organize it, you know, and you can go to, uh, what is it like, um, what's the organization place? Not Bed Bath & Beyond, but the other one. Um, mm-hmm. um, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's um, you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, yes. it just has it's full of organizational stuff, and you oh, could go there store. and you could mm-hmm. you container, container store. store. Yeah, thank you. thank you. You could go there. You could spend a gajillion dollars uh, and come home and organize yeah. all your stuff, or you could just pitch a bunch of it, and yeah. you have a yeah. lot less digital or and or real life clutter. Yeah. yeah, you know that whole the whole idea of minimalist living 
is something that I absolutely love. Like we're constantly, whether it's on my calendar, like I have been over the last six months, like on a mission to really make sure my calendar reflects what really needs to be on there Mm -hmm. and what the real priorities are versus all the clutter. Um, And that's actually something we're doing with our team structure right now is we're going in and deleting all of the unnecessary meetings, all the unnecessary calls, all the unnecessary Zooms that might have been put on for a purpose at one point, but are no longer serving a purpose. And we're literally auditing all of that right now on our team's organization going, is this here and serving a very clear and specific purpose that's moving the needle in our top 20%? Or is this an 80% of something that really isn't moving the needle on anything and really shouldn't be there? And so like pipeline is a great example, like our sales team, right? You manage your pipelines. Well, we have those and then we have your goal setting like 411 meeting with your um, leader on our team. We've talked about the 411 in previous episodes Um, and we are combining those now to be one meeting, right? That may add five minutes to that one meeting, but isn't a separate one. And we're just deleting the other one off the calendar. And so that's something that I've really been purposeful with is the word delete specifically with things around my calendar. And especially when I'm overwhelmed, that's the first thing I go and do is look, take a look at my calendar for the next three weeks and say, what did I commit to a long time ago on here that really doesn't need to be on here? Or what is it that I can remove that just is not essential to moving the needle right now? So that's been a big one for me. I, yeah, I was just going to add, it's funny that you said that, because when I was looking through this episode, I was like, we need to talk about our calendar with Delita, uh-huh. because I've been struggling to do this night before plan. This is my new yeah. habit I'm trying to yeah. build, and it's just not coming naturally night to me at all. Night before hard, though, because it's Well, it's, it's so before I leave. Ideally, it's when I leave the office. That the, the challenge I'm falling into is my unpredictable schedule, which means it mm-hmm. is pushing it mm-hmm. tonight. That's a different topic. Um, but one of them is look at your calendar the next day and delete appointments that aren't serving you, that aren't in your priorities. And I was sharing with this group, Wendy was mentioning her uh, and Sarah and I, Uh, spoke yesterday and I was sharing with them that for the first time over the last few weeks I've started to do that very minimally Mm -hmm. but I just did it today and it it makes me feel both simultaneously guilty and great (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know because you're like like I'm canceling on someone but I just can't like I am so much calmer when I've done it three or four times and I have been so much calmer and better off and probably I wasn't going to be that present I probably wasn't going to be the best via at those meetings anyway, right? It just mm-hmm. it wasn't the right, it's not the right domino right now with everything I have going on. And I have come to peace with, you know, deleting some of my calendar. So when we talk yeah. about, you know, do it or delete it, it can be, um, it can be meetings with other people. It can be tasks. I always, whenever I'm coaching people, The coaching habit is a framework I use a lot for coaching people. And they talk about, right, the three Ps. So Mm -hmm. projects, people, or patterns, like habits or behaviors. And so I find myself when I'm thinking about myself or coaching others, well, is this a, a project problem, a people problem, or like a habit, you know, you know, a, a recurring behavioral problem, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. And so I kind of wonder if that doesn't play into this a little bit. Yeah, I know, think it absolutely does. We can ask does. ourselves projects, people, patterns. So. Mm-hmm. Not you know, to delete people, uh, yeah. but. Well, yeah, sometimes, sometimes you do, well, though. Meetings sometimes are, you do. Yeah, yeah meeting, meetings can be. I love that that you're doing that, Seychelle. I think that's just so smart. I mean, we just get into these yeah. ruts Thank you. of meetings. Yeah. And uh, we actually did something. Well, we're doing the 12-week year, which has been fun. Mm-hmm. And um, I feel like everybody's doing that side note. Like yeah. everybody. We're, I have yeah. we're in our second is. year of it. It's great. It's great. Yeah. No, we're in our so second great. year of 12 yeah. It's great. Did I tell you what we're doing for yeah, our yeah. prize? Huh? So oh, this is so exciting. So we, so we get a prize if we, um, we hit our goal. And our okay. goal is, um, let's see, 100 referrals and 100 under contract. And okay. we have a, yeah. a virtual assistant on our team who uh, has a piece of land and it was on her goal to so start saving for a house this year. So if we hit our goal, our team is going to get Julia a house. <gasps> what? In the yeah. awesome. Yeah. How much does a house cost there? I love that. 10 grand. I just got goosebumps. I love Isn't that. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Does she know? Is it a surprise or does oh, she know? Oh, she knows. We told her it was a surprise. We told her on our huddle last week. She was flipping out. She's flipping out. I of course. I that yeah. love awesome. that. That yeah. is awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, oh if any of y'all have a referral for Austin, Texas, send it in the <laughs> yeah. next ten weeks. 
Yeah, I that's love that. amazing. Let's get Julia a house. That's awesome. Yeah, I love that. Yes, <sighs> that is amazing. I I just that is making me. I mean, I'm I'm a thousand percent stealing that. Yeah, that's right. really that's special <laughs> and amazing. All right. Anyway, I'm glad we sidetracked on that. That was yeah. Sorry, it's total it, sidetrack. So. No, I, it's worthwhile. I think that's so freaking awesome. Yeah. So, Wendy, what's the next D? Well, the next D is really defer it. Um, mm-hmm. Decisions are tough, you know, and sometimes yeah. it's hard to say no to things. A lot of us are yes people. I'm kind of a yes person. And um, over here, yeah. So the nice thing about deferring it is really you're not deleting it. Uh, you're not doing it, but you're saying, like, it's not right now, which yeah. is which which is appropriate sometimes, right? So this could mm-hmm. be a new project. Mm-hmm. I know sometimes we come back from events and things like that, and we have like a really good idea. They were like, ooh, this would be perfect for our team. Uh, mm-hmm. But just having the common sense to be like, well, you know, we're, we're, it's kinda, we, we're kinda full now, so let's think about that in Q4. Mm-hmm. Um, or, you know, a new project that doesn't require, that, that isn't urgent, right? You can look at your mm-hmm. calendar and say, gosh, I'm just packed this week. I'm not gonna commit to it. Like, I just feel like I commit to things like very okay. quickly, mm-hmm. you know? Like, I, I, Jay is so good at it. He's like, oh yeah, like I'm free in 17 weeks. Like, I'm gonna book you then, you know? And I'm like, oh, I can, I'm gonna do whatever I can do to squeeze you in in the next three Ditto. days, you yes. know? And it's just, um, it's not okay. good. I just wanted to throw in here a little hack on this one. Um, if you're not deferring it, and I don't know if this applies to you, Wendy, but I know it you know, has applied to me, um, maybe think about the fact <clears throat> that you don't have a script. Mm-hmm. And so um, I didn't. And so in, in absence of knowing what to say, I would default to yes. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I just had to get really good. I had to, out of necessity, get really good because I have so many people coming at yeah. me. And then what happens is we go to our company events <laughs> and the company has an agenda that wants to, you know, get everyone excited about. So then all my people come back to me and they go, we want to do this and this and it just mm-hmm. happened yesterday. And mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, that is a great idea. That's not the next domino. So uh, I'm probably not going to focus on that one until May or June. Okay. So, so I typically will say it's not That's the great. next domino or it's great idea, probably not top three priority. We need to, you know, get this done. And a great word to use in this script is the word because. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of research behind using that word, as we all know, that if you say mm-hmm. because, no matter what comes after that, people just tend to soften on your response. So I'll say, you know what, that is a great idea, and I'm probably not going to focus a lot of time and resources on that until May or June because we have to get these other two things out first that are way mm-hmm. overdue. Oh, okay. Right? So if you use the word because, and if you mm-hmm. have just a go-to script, and mine tends to sound like that, like a domino, like it's not the next domino, or from the one thing, um, or, you know, or it's just not, not you know, that's, the, I'm, I'm mm-hmm. hearing you, you're seen, like I, I'm acknowledging you, and it's probably not going to happen now. So I just wanted to throw that out. Yeah, no, I love that. Well, that's I awesome. usually say it's not my one thing. And mm-hmm. Jay says that all the time. And he's like, well, it's my brand. You know, he doesn't over schedule because he's like, well, that's my brand. Not have yeah. scheduling. Yeah. 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 Ben really taught me on the over scheduling thing. I, I have done a lot better. We've talked about this before with a lot more white space, like the, the even the delete, even the deferring it just going back to the schedule again and it takes a long time to get used to in my experience yeah. anyway like i'm like am i working well, you hard can enough also, i'm not working I mean, hard a enough lot of times pe- <laughs> a lot of times people want something from you right away and so you right. can just ignore it like people people mm-hmm. are lazy they'll ask you for something yeah. and you just ignore it or if somebody's trying to get on oh, your I calendar and you don't really want to um you don't necessarily want to talk to them you can easily say Thank you so much for your request. I'm full up right now. Uh, can you circle back around in about seven weeks? And 90% of those people are never going to yeah. circle back around. I love that. Seven weeks is so, sp- that's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So that. when you're deferring it, um, you still <laughs> want to make sure that you tackle those tasks, though, right? You don't mm-hmm. want to have all these deferred tasks um so you can you can time block for it right you can say these are all the things that 
I deferred, um, you know, and for me, I use my Panda planner and I have my little not prior, I get my priorities done, but then I have my little list. And sometimes what mm-hmm. I end up doing is I just bounce the stuff on the list, you know, mm-hmm. all the way till the end of the week. And then, um, once a month I have, a uh, time block sometime just for like personal tasky type stuff yeah. right and so when that day rolls around I can just like book doctor's appointments all that kind of stuff that um that we just don't prioritize um but then you know when you're looking at those tasky things what happens for me sometimes too is again even if I thought it was a priority two weeks ago sometimes it's not a priority anymore so you just end up deleting yeah. it right so and, mm-hmm. and there's just yeah, a fine sure. line between deferring and procrastinating indefinitely. That's fair. That's very we, fair. I mean, we call that kicking the can down the road. And what yeah. um, literally that is a phrase we use in our organization. And, you know, I, I, I'm in full agreement with everything you said, because what I have found is, is that if the person or, you know, the three P's, if the person project it's really person or the project uh, mm-hmm. is important enough. It will continue to reemerge. They will yeah. continue to reemerge, and you know it'll it won't go away. But a lot of them go away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The you know it's interesting. I found myself thinking uh, way back, like going way back to the very origins of our podcast back in the mm-hmm. quarantine days. Mm-hmm. Oh, and back to twenty twenty. Back to twenty twenty, which felt, feels, <laughs> feels I don't like even know if that feels ago, yesterday or ten honest. years yeah. ago. But. Well, guys, we've been doing this for over two years now. I know, I know. it's crazy. It's amazing. It does not feel like two years, so it feels no. shorter. But then it feels that longer. Feels shorter, but then I know. That other part feels so shorter. It's yeah. weird weird concept of time but I was thinking back to that about how one of the biggest lessons I learned because I think we did an episode on that like on what were the mm-hmm. lessons we learned mm-hmm. and one of the ones I learned Wendy I was just listening to you talk and I was like oh I learned that during the quarantine was like people's deadlines and time frames are not mine you know mm-hmm. my organization has priorities I personally have priorities I, I I know my assignment like I know what I'm accountable to and how you know what I have to move the needle on yeah and you know I, I like many new leaders I think when I was a newer leader I just wanted to please I wanted everybody to like me in my case I came into this organization and I just I didn't say no Wendy at all and and you know I just wasn't deferring anything and so what what started to happen inadvertently is just that I was just letting people People down. It, one human mm. can only do so much, you know? And so you have to get good at scripts and you have to get good at deferring things. Otherwise, everyone's going to get mad at you. It's going to have the opposite effect. Yeah. Well, and, it, and the 80 yeah. 20 rule is in effect. I mean, at the, if you're starting out in your career, at actually any point in your career, if you're doing, uh, if you're knocking it out of the park on your 80%, but you're failing at your 20%, you're going to get fired. That's the thing. Yeah. And if you are killing it at your 20%, you're going to probably get promoted and promoted and someone's going to come in and help you because you're so good at the 20%. Yeah. So yeah. That's continue to focus to on what that. you're good at. Uh, delegate the rest, which is our which is our next, our last D, right, Bia? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, delegate. So um, this is a, a big, big, big one. And uh, all the people I coach um, and consult and, and mentor, um, this is typically the biggest challenge, right, is, is delegation, because everyone thinks that if they delegate it, it won't be done as good as, as if they did it. And by the way, that is true. It probably won't be. And mm-hmm. I also know that the one thing, one thing, that most happy and successful people have in common is that they have just come to peace with delegating certain things in their life, right? Mm -hmm. The question is, you know, what are they? And I mean, Wendy talks about being a time billionaire. That is that is That's an awesome due thing. to delegation, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, there's some other things in there, like there's some passive income goals that that fall into that and different things, but in order to delegate you know the biggest um struggle most successful people have is that they come to a critical mass and they're so busy and it takes more time to train someone to delegate them than just to do it themselves so they fall into a cycle we talked about the three p's well this is a pattern cycle they throw they they fall into a pattern of bustling through it and it just never ends and they keep hitting ceilings and so at one point you have to make a decision that you're going to get a little it's going to get a little hard 
harder before it gets easier and you're going to write checklists and and write a process and write playbooks and 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 train people Mm -hmm. so that you can delegate right and and wendy's got a bunch of great hacks for delegation i think of her as delegation queen so Mm -hmm. i'll toss it over to you wendy however before i do that i will say that i think for most really busy people for me in my life anyway um what i have come to peace with doing is paying someone to follow me around Uh, when i am in a very busy crunch time i i understand that paying someone to follow me around it might take a month or two for them to learn it but that month or two would have gone by anyway (laughs) Mm -hmm. And uh, they'll probably learn more um, literally hearing me on the phone, seeing me in action, seeing me with clients, seeing me with people than, you know, if I would take hours out of my everyday trying to teach them like in a classroom setting. That's just just not realistic for me. So it's time or money. And so I've kind of opted, well, if I can throw some money at this and have someone come to my organization and an apprentice, so to speak, with whoever they need to train with, the playbook will typically emerge. That's what I found, but but Wendy, you've got a lot of great things here. On well, um, so. I mean, I'd love to just go back to email because I know for a lot of people, it just eats up a lot of their time, and uh, and so if you are the kind of person who does want to, you know, fewer emails in their e- email box, I'll just kind of walk you through what I do, which is, sure. you know, if you've got Gmail, you can already separate it into categories. I know people who don't do that, and I don't know why they don't do that because all of your forums all of your like junk mail um, and then whatever the other, like all of your Facebook notifications and Mm. then all of your regular stuff goes into separate categories, okay? So I don't ever even look at the other three. I go in every so often and just delete them all without even looking at them. So far, my life is totally fine. And then when I wake up, A lot of times I will do my email before I start my day because I like to just see if there's anything that's important in there. So I'll just scan through my email and while I'm doing it, I'm just deleting probably about 50% of my emails is all junk anyway. I just know it's Mm -hmm. junk. It's like this, this, this. I get some things from the Daily Stoic. Sometimes I read it, sometimes I don't, you know. It's like kind of like sometimes that stuff is like having New Yorker magazines. When I lived in New York, you had a whole stack in the corner and it's like New Yorker guilt. So I don't do that, I just delete (laughs) it, right? And then, um, once you've got that, um, you're really you're really looking at the things that are that need to be addressed, right? So then I kind of go back and I address the things that are it, it, like the, in the two minute rule, right? These are the things that I can tackle right now. It's like knock that out, knock that out, knock that out, knock that knock that out, and then there are things that are the priority. So if I get a let's let's say I, I get a referral from another agent in another place that's a priority right i don't want that to sit in my mm-hmm. in, in email inbox for for 12 right. hours right yeah for so sure. i need to take care of that right away so those things are the priority and then i just leave everything else and i just let it sit there and um and then maybe in the afternoon i'll do it again but um usually what i do is there's a lot of built up stuff by friday or really Sunday. So Sunday when I sit down with my 411, I'm looking through all those emails and thinking like, how can I assign these to different people? Mm. And that's Mm -hmm. when I take my 411 out. And sometimes I put the things on the 411. It's like, oh, well, you know, I got a message from my attorney and they said I need to review the wills. Okay, that's, nobody can, I'm only, I don't have anyone in my life that can do that, right? But yeah. there might be something there that my director of operations can do, and then I'll, I'll click on that tab. So I'm adding, I'm going through my email and I'm adding things to my 411 that are for me, that are, that are probably tasks. I have an 80% yeah. task list for me. Um, sometimes they're priorities. And then I have my tab that's 80% for, for everybody else in my world. So Margot runs her best life. I've got stuff for her. I've got my director of operations. I've got my guy who runs my home services. I've got my top two agents. You know, I've got my director of lead gen, blah, blah, blah. So I'm just plugging stuff in. And then I meet with all those people on Monday. And on Monday, I'm just pulling that up during the 411. And I'm saying, can you do this? Can you do this? Can you do this? Can you do this? So that's kind of how my email gets situated. And of course, like lots of other stuff comes up during the week that I'm adding to those two lists. But... That's really what that looks like. 
That's really good. And I think you're also really good about, you know, your not to do lists and kind of keeping running lists like, you know, oh, it's during my day, I'm doing this thing and I hate this thing, it's going to go on this list, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, your not to do list is also obviously a really good delegation list. But you know, the other thing to talk about ladies is is at home, you know, and we use this analogy so much, I feel like we're probably overusing it. And I'm going to say it again, (laughs) which is that your family does not, they're not going to remember, nor do they care, you know, who made the dinner. What they'll remember is sitting down with you at dinner and Mm -hmm. remember having those family dinners. So you can look at, you know, if you're in a client facing business, client facing stuff may need to be you, but everything behind you in the background doesn't have to be you. Same with your your household. They'll remember a clean house. They don't care who cleaned it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it doesn't have to be cleaned exactly the way you would clean it. It's like you said um, at the the beginning of this section, Via, like I think about my lovely housekeeper who I love. She's she's worked with Mm -hmm. me for 12 years. Um, She's done lots of make readies and and clean my house every week for a long time. And um, she still doesn't do everything like perfectly, you know, Mm -hmm. because maybe she's got a helper there or whatever. And you know, mm-hmm. she'll like, for instance, this morning, she had the like little pet food bowls on top of the pet. And I'm like, Ugh. you know, like, I would never yeah. have done that. I would have put it right back where I found it. But it's like a moment of frustration that ends in in, in a second. And I and, mm-hmm. and at the same time, I don't want to clean my own house anymore. You know, yep. so and that's yeah. how it is with most most things. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you guys, today was great. We learned the uh, four Ds of effective time management. Um, and it's really, you know, time management is something that we all struggle with because we've got so many priorities. We're overwhelmed with information. Um, you know, most of us that are building our empires have a lot on our plates. Uh, but, you know, the four Ds really involves just figuring out uh, what to act on now. Uh, what to act on later or what to act on never. And the four Ds is just a nice framework for that. So just remember next time you're feeling overwhelmed with all your stuff, you can do it, delete it, defer it, or delegate it. So thank you guys so much for joining us today. And we hope you go out and use all of your extra time to build a big business and an even bigger life. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye.